Hey guys, it's me again. So, just want to talk about that uh, section 3.5 for pre-calc today. So, it's about the complex zeros, the way to find the complex zeros. So, let's start with the first example. So, this one is called the cubic quinomial for p of x. So, we got x to the power of 3 minus 3x squared plus x minus 3. So, first thing that you want to do is that you want to find out all the zeros of p. And then the second thing is that you want to find a complete factorization of P. So we'll talk about that part B later. So as you can see that here it's a quinomial. And first thing that we want to try is to factor it. If that doesn't work, then we try to use that P over Q and then the synthetic division. So we try to factor by grouping. And this one, we try to group the first two terms together and then the last two terms all together. And as you can see that the first two terms, we see that x squared is the greatest common factor. So we pulled it out first. And then for the last two terms, you're probably wondering there's no greatest common factor remain. Well, so there's no greatest common factor, so that means 1, which is the number, which is divisible by all the number, the variable. And also we want to take out the common binomial, which is x minus 3. And then the rest of the remaining factor, we got x squared plus 1. And we set equal to 0, so we solve for x. So for the first binomial, x squared plus 1 equals 0, and then we solve for x by isolating it. So x squared equals negative 1, and then take the square root on both sides. And since we do know that it's quadratic, so that's why it's positive and negative i. Again, square root of negative 1, it's considered i, imaginary number. And then for the real solution, we do have x equals 3. So if you just count them all, we got one, two, and three solutions. So by the time that you put it back to the complete factorization form, we do have x minus i times the quantity of x plus i, and also times the quantity of x minus 3. And for those people wondering, what's the difference between the factor form and the complete factorization form? Complete factorization form is that we need to rewrite everything with the real number and the complex zero. And then for the, factorized, for the factor form, it's just about the factor with either the linear binomial or the quadratic binomial. So here's the one, p of x, x minus i, x plus i times x minus 3. So now here's another example for finding the zeros, the real zeros, and the complex zeros. And then, again, the last thing that we're going to be doing is finding the complete factorization. So if you just count it, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the highest degree is to the 4th power. So this one is called the 4th degree pentanomial. And a lot of people might be wondering, can we factor this by grouping? If you try to group that x to the power of 4, 7x squared, negative 26, it looks like nothing is factorable from there. So we need to use that p over q, which is called the rational zero theorem. So first thing that we want to find out is that all the possible factors of p over q. Again, p is the, all the possible factors of the constant term. So the constant term right here is negative 26. And then q, which is the possible factors of all, all the leading coefficients, which is plus minus 1. And we started with that plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 13, plus minus 26. It's all over plus minus 1. So basically just like all those set of numbers again. So plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 13, plus minus 26. So for the first attempt, I try to start with that divisor x equals 1. So again, you want to list all the possible factors and then start with that x equals 1 and all the coefficient that we have for p of x we got 1 negative 3 7 21 and negative 26 so for the synthetic division the first number we don't do anything about it so we just want to bring it down so 1 times 1 we got 1 and then plus negative 3 we got negative 2 and then we run through the same process again so negative 2 times the divisor so we got negative 2 so 7 plus negative 2 then the new remainder is 5. And then 5 times 1, it's 5. 
and then plus 21, so we got 26. And guess what? The last number that we put in for the blank here, which is positive 26. And the remainder, we end up with 0. Again, any time they go through the synthetic division, so that means the power is going to be reducing down by 1 degree. So what we got here for the quotient, it's like 1x to the power of 3 minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 26. And then from the cubic quinomial, we want to try that, the synthetic division one more time. Because that once we reduce down to the quadratic, so we can use the either the quadratic formula or we can factor it to find out the rest of the zeros. So from here we try negative two. Again, write down all the coefficients we have. One, negative two, five, and twenty-six. So the first number, we don't do anything about it. Bring it down. So one times negative two, negative two. And then negative two plus negative two, which is negative four. And then negative four times negative two, positive eight. And then 5 plus 8, which is 13. And again, <clears throat> for the final remainder, we want to end up with 0. So that means the whole thing is divisible. So once you rewrite it, so the quotient would be considered x squared minus 4x plus 13. And now, is this factorable? Which is not, because 13 is a prime. So that means we can use the quadratic formula. So quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So by plugging a number, so we got the other two solutions. So 4 plus minus square root of negative 36 over 2. So simplified a little bit further. So we got 4 plus minus 6i over 2. And then we try to reduce that, so we got 2 plus minus 3i. As you can see that, all the solution to divisor that we just went through, so we got 1, negative 2, and then the imaginary solutions, or the complex solution. So we got 2 plus 3i, and then 2 minus 3i. And then we just want to rewrite it with the complete factorizations. So we started with x minus 1, x minus negative 2, and then x minus the quantity of 2 plus 3i, and then x minus the quantity of 2 minus 3i. And as you may know that all the positive solution or the negative, we always come up with the conjugate for the factorization. And then simplify it a little bit further. Negative times negative, which is positive. Negative times positive, which is negative. And then negative times negative, positive. And here's the one the complete factorization of p of x of the four degree pentanomial. So here's the problem that you can try. So this one is a cubic trinomial. Again, two part of the problem that you need to go through. Find all the zero first. So try to factor it. If that's not factorable, we try to use that p over q going through the synthetic division. And then the complete factorization. And here's what we found. And thank you for watching the video today.